Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 14th of February with me Patrick Munley. Before we jump into the data it's worth noting that over the weekend uh, President Joe Biden and uh, Russia's Vladimir Putin had an hour long telephone call on Saturday. Uh, Putin uh, told Biden that the West would respond decisively to any invasion of Ukraine, adding such a step would produce widespread suffering and isolate my, uh, Moscow. Neither side said there had been any breakthroughs. The senior Biden administration officials said the call was professional and substantive, but there was no fundamental change. The Kremlin said Putin told Biden that Washington had failed to take Russia's main concerns into account and had received no substantial answer on key elements of its security demand. Washington ordered most of its staff on Saturday to leave Ukraine immediately due to the threat of invasion. Of course, peace is preferable as the first order of focus, but the immediate focus is on potential implications for markets and also central bank policy stances, including the Feds. In keeping with the line that history has a tendency of repeating itself, it's useful to potentially draw lessons from when Russia invaded the Crimean Peninsula in 2014, with the obvious lack of any assurances that this time will necessarily repeat that experience. Recall that tensions intensified over February through March to uh, 2014. The build-up of tensions and the ensuing invasion drove a brief rally in the US 10-year Treasury note from a peak of 3.03% at the end of 2013 to about 2.58% by early February, before stabilizing in the 245 to 2.6% range until June. The Federal Reserve had commenced uh, tapering bond purchases at the December 2013 meeting and was unwavering in its commitment towards continued tapering over 2014 until net purchases concluded towards the end of the year. Lower Treasury yields may have incited this policy stance given that they were deemed unsuitable for the conditions of the domestic economy at the time. There was a similarly mild and short-lived response in stocks and at the time of other developments the S&P 500 sold off by another 6% from its late January lows through early February 2014 and then went on to rally for the remainder of the year. These market moves weren't all about Russia and Ukraine tensions. They may have only been minimally driven by such circumstances. Recall that oil prices collapsed later in the year as the Saudis sought to drive US shale producers out of business. Emerging markets were also in turmoil. Uh, Chair Yellen dropped her six months uh, guidance for how soon the Fed could commence hiking. Uh, the policy rate after ending bond purchases, the ISIS invaded Iraq in June 2014. But the possible takeaway is that the potential return of this geopolitical risk could be a tactical and relatively short-lived trade that fails to knock the Federal Reserve off its course while it remains wedded to achieving its dual mandates. Today, obviously, it's quite different in terms of circumstances, including much higher inflation, are likely to solidify that focus, barring much worse outcomes this time around. So the overall conclusion really I want to pass on to you is that the 2014 experience is that Russia may only shoot itself in the foot in destroying its own economy. Global market effects could be brief and outweighed by other considerations. At least the Fed may not be blown off course, although it might be a different matter for the ECB. So just some thoughts there on the geopolitical risk at the moment. Now let's move into the data for the week. In the US, Tuesday sees Fed, uh, Empire State Index and January PPI. Uh, the Empire State Index is expected to print a 10 handle, um, providing a timely update on the New York manufacturing sector. In terms of the PPI, we're looking for 0.5% ongoing supply issues uh, will support producer prices. On Wednesday, we get January retail sales in the US looking for a 1.8% print. Omnicom concerns have temporarily subdued uh, retail spending. Um, we also get January import price index looking for a 1.3% print there. Import prices are set to remain elevated for the foreseeable time. We also get January, January industrial production 0.4% supply issues in Omnicom uh, continue to create volatility. For that reads, we get December business inventories looking for a 2% print. Businesses are pushing through supply issues at a robust pace. And finally, we get the FOMC January meeting minutes. Although a little stale at this stage, focus will be on discussions of the rate path for rates in 2022. Then into Thursday, we get US initial jobless claims set to remain at a very low level. 
We also get January housing starts, looking for a negative 0.1%, uh, although supported by robust, uh, robust underlying demand for housing. Uh, Fed Philly index, looking for a 20 handle there, that will offer a gauge of the business city activity in the region. And we get some Fed speak, notably it's uh, Bullard who will be speaking on the economy and policy outlook and it was him who his shift in position really started to see the focus in the elevation in terms of the rate activity that we've seen over the last uh, couple of weeks. On Friday we ran out the week with January existing home sales looking for a, one, a minus 1.3 percent lack of inventory has hindered sales activity and then we get the January leading index 0.2 percent robust economic momentum set to continue this year and we ran it out with Fed speak Evans and Waller take part in a policy panel along with Fed Chair Mester. From a technical perspective the dollar index has continued to hold above the pivotal 95 trend line support as it does so we're ultimately looking for an extension through the pivot 96.19 and then on to get a test of the 98 handle also projected monthly range resistance just above. At this stage we've only really uh, looked to the bearish side if we took out the 95 on a closing basis looking for a move down to 93.58 and then on to potentially 92.38. Over in the Eurozone let's see where we start our data this week. That's Tuesday as well um, we get the February ZEW uh, survey of expectations last time 49.4 expectations rebounded firmly and above average prints. We also get December trade balance, uh, surge in import prices induced first deficit in uh, the trade balance in Europe for nearly 10 years. Uh, we also get fourth quarter GDP looking for a 0.3% print there, second estimate to confirm the slowing of year end activity. And then on Wednesday we get December industrial production in Europe, 0.2% expected, broad based easing of supply pressures yet to, uh, yet to show itself in the data. And we round out the week on Friday in Europe with February consumer confidence looking for a negative 7.6 handle, COVID-19 concerns have continued to weigh on confidence. From a technical perspective the Euro dollar held the resistance at the uh, just below 115, now looking for a pullback to hold the pivot. 11270, 11280, watch for bullish reversal patterns there to engage on the long side, looking for a move up into the yearly pivot at 11638. At this stage, a loss of the pivot on a closing basis would open a retest of the prior cycle lows down towards 111. And then through those lows, we would be looking for that 78.6% retracement target at the 110 handle and the uh, descending projected uh, trend line support zone there. In Japan, we have some uh, Q4 GDP data out on Tuesday, looking for a 1.5 positive uh, print there, 1.5%. Consumption rebounded from the Delta set to really drive growth. We also get December industrial production in Japan, final estimate supply issues remain a material headwind there. And we then have on Thursday, uh, Japan, December machinery orders looking for negative 2% print there. The emergence of Omicron in December should have slowed or impacted capital investment. And then on Friday we get January CPI in Japan uh, looking for a positive 0.6% inflation at pre-pandemic levels and the BOJ will be focusing on wage growth. From a technical perspective, Dolly Yen traded up into the prior cycle highs and, uh, and found some supply coming into the close on Friday. As long as we hold the pivot now at 115.40, I'm looking for this to grind higher up into our target zone, 117.80. At this stage, only a close back through the pivot would suggest a, a meaningful double top in play here. And then we'd look for a move down to test the 113.30 area as support. Moving to the UK, uh, again, Tuesday is the first day of really meaningful data. We get December ILO in unemployment rates, looking for a positive 4.1% print as the recovery continues to edge unemployment lower. Wednesday, January CPI, headline inflation remains at near 30 year highs. We round out the week in the UK on Friday with January retail sales. Omnicrom has probably temporarily softened uh, retail activity. From a technical perspective, 
Sterling is holding in the consolidation zone that we were looking for just above the pivot and above this ascending trend line here, 13470s. As we continue to consolidate, we look for an upside advanced test 138.35 is the next upside objective. Only a close back through the trend line would warn of a more meaningful uh, decline underway. And then we will be looking for a move that retests the prior cycle lows 131.70s and onto the equality objective at 130, just above the 130 handle there. And finally, in Australia, again, data starts on Tuesday with the RBA minutes. Get it to receive some color around the plausibility of rate hikes this year. On Wednesday, we get uh, January Westpac MI leading index, uh, local components still cycling out of the Delta shock there. On Thursday, we get January employment data. New South Wales and Victoria continue to reopen, but the Omicron during the summer holidays suggests greater than, un uh, than usual uncertainty about this number. Uh, the, unemployment, the unemployment rate they're looking for is 4.1%, uh, with some seeing that as being uh, overly optimistic at this stage. And that rounds out the data in Australia. And from a technical perspective, the Aussie dollar made a test of the descending trend line that we talked about last week at the 7230s and was rejected from there. If we get a close through the pivot cluster here, 7070s, then we're looking for a move down to test the monthly projected range support at the 69 handle. Only a close back through the highs of 72.50 would suggest a more meaningful upside test underway, which should see us up into the descending trend line at 74.20s. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.